Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing a quick repair to this liquid propane manifold. I used a very low silver bearing silver solder alloy for this job. I believe it was 15% silver. And they say you really need to stay in that 30% silver range when you're soldering brass to stainless steel or steel. And essentially this thing has some invisible hairline cracks. You can't see them with the naked eye. But we were getting a little bit of a propane leak out of this thing. So I'm going to put some 45% silver solder on this thing before I do some last final testing on this boiler that I'm building. And I just thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride and um, share some things that I learned about brazing. At the time I first put this together, I did not have the proper brazing alloy on hand. I had some Stasil 15 and I thought maybe that would be enough but it turns out that it wasn't. This right here is some Staysil 45. It's a 45% silver bearing wire. When you're doing brass to brass, you can just do phosphor copper. You don't even need, you know, any silver, but it's a very thick braze. So if you don't want a very thick metal, the higher the silver content, the better it flows. This is gonna be very wet and it's gonna be very difficult to do this job because of that. An oxidizing flame will not have a big long cone like that. It'll be very tiny and about on the verge of exploding. This is an oxyhydrogen flame with some propane gas modification. One of the hardest things for me when I first started brazing was knowing when to apply the rod. Essentially, it's somewhat similar to soldering where you use the heat of the work to melt the solder, not the torch itself. It's kind of like that, but you need to do a little bit of both. I like to use just the very tip of this flame. I don't ever go anywhere near that inner cone. that just overheats the area and causes damage to the area that you're trying to braise. Stainless steel can sugar if you get it too hot, and that will completely ruin any possibility of a brace joint. Basically the way brazing works is this liquid metal kind of dissolves a small microscopic layer of the stainless steel and creates an alloy with it. That is how brazing works. Soldering does the same thing. It's kind of like the way water will dissolve sugar. Well, liquid metals can dissolve other metals even though it's below their melting point. But it's only a very thin layer. It's a microscopic layer. So essentially what I'm doing here is as soon as I start to see that metal glow, I know it's time to get in there and go for it. I'm keeping that rod very close to the feather because I want my rod to be hot also, but you don't want to touch it too much with the flame because it'll start beating up and you'll lose it. So I'm hitting it with the flame and using the heat of the work at the same time. It's quite the dance. It's, it's not as easy as soldering, obviously. So there's a little bit more delicacy to it. but. I'm not going to sit here and bore you with me showing you all of these, but you can see how wet that um, high silver bearing solder is. Okay, now we're going to hurry up and take this inside and put it in the sink. Get all the flux off of it. The best way to get this flux off of here is with an ultrasonic cleaner. I got these two from people from China, sent them to me for review. This one right here is the best of all that I've ever used. I'll try and get you guys the link to this one. But it's been running forever, and it has a cooling fan on it. This one here is kind of junk. All right, so we got 120 PSI of air on this thing, and there are no observable leaks. So some of those little hairline cracks that were caused when I was tightening this thing are not going to be a problem. When you're brazing brass to brass, you can use a very low silver bearing brazing rod which is definitely going to save you some money. Those things are like six dollars a stick but this here is like a phosphorus copper alloy and it's a very thick solder so or a very thick brazing alloy so if you've got like some wide gaps you can see here how massive the gap is. That 45 percent silver solder would never do this job. I'd have about four dollars worth of silver stuck down in this fitting that I'm making because it's so liquid it would fill the entire void 
of these parts up. But with this very thick copper phosphor alloy, we're able to do some very large gaps with no problem. It's a very thick brazing alloy. Another thing that was very hard to figure out was how to get this flux off of here. This stuff is like glass. So, couldn't find out an ultrasonic cleaner is the best way to remove flux. Also, if you spray the part with hot water while the part's still hot, that also blisters it right off. You can see here the massive voids this copper phosphor filled up, but it didn't fill the back ends up on these, which saves me time and money. This right here is a um, praying mantis that's been living on the side door by my shop for several days now. It's been eating up a lot of those stink bugs that are kind of plaguing the planet right now. It's also eating wasps. I found it eating a couple of wasps also, which is pretty freaking awesome. So I've just been letting this guy do what he does. For any of you who don't know what this is, it's a praying mantis and they live in certain areas where I'm at, but not everywhere. It's pretty weird. I grew up about 25 miles from here and never see one of these things in my life, but at my house I see them every day and they get pretty big. Check him out. He's taking a look at us. <laughs> They're very docile creatures. You can actually pick one of these things up 